In this problem, we're given the function f of x equals 290 times 1.11 to the x. We're supposed to do two things. The first, evaluate f of 24. This is the easier of the two because they're giving me the input. All I need to do is use my calculator and type out what I see here to find the output. So there was an x in the parentheses, now there's a 24. This indicates that x is 24. So I'm going to type this bit out right here in my calculator, but replace x with 24. To do that, hit the on key on your calculator. You should get to what's called the home screen. Type in 290, the left parentheses right here, then 1.11, the right parentheses right here. To raise to the power of 24, you use the caret key here. Now I know the equation had an x, but we're replacing x with 24. So now I can just type in 24. Your calculator might not have the 24 looking like an exponent. It might have some different format, but that's okay. If I press enter, I should get the decimal approximation to f of 24. The direction said to round your answers to two decimal places. So I would type in 3549.36. So the fact that the third digit past the decimal is a 5 means that the second digit should be rounded up. The second part of the problem, you're going to want to hit y equals can we, because we're going to use the graphing calculator and its intersect feature to find out where the output is 522. So right here where it says f of x equals 290 times 1.11 to the x, we know the output this time, f of x, is 522. So where you see the f of x right here, you'd actually replace it with 522 and you have yourself an equation. So we're solving 522 equals this stuff. So to use your graph and calculus intersect feature, you type the left-hand side of the equation into y1. Well, the left-hand side is f of x, but remember we're replacing f of x with 522. In mathematics, if two things are equal, one can be substituted for the other. So I'm just substituting f of x with 522. So after you've pressed y equals, type in 522. Either go down, arrow, or press enter to get to y2. Type in the right-hand side of the equation, which would be 290. Left parenthesis, 1.11. Right parenthesis. Use the caret key again. This time we're leaving x as a variable, so I'm going to use this key right here as the easiest way to get the letter x. Now my calculator is currently in standard viewing mode, which means that if I graph it right now, my window is such that I'll see 10 units to the left and right of the y-axis and 10 units down and up relative to the x-axis. This is not going to show the behavior I need. The reason I know this is the first equation I type in is y equals 522, which is a horizontal line passing through 522. That means that my line is going to be such that all the y values are 522. So what I need to do is I need to hit window right here and where it says y max equals 10, 10 simply isn't high enough to see 522. So since my cursor is up here and I want to go down to my y max, I'm going to hit the down arrow several times. I don't need to delete the y max, I can simply type over it. Some people put 522 so that they can see the horizontal line. The problem with this is that the line will be at the very top of the screen and the screen is used to type other things. So what I'm going to do is I usually try to almost double that, maybe go to 1,000. So I'm going to hit clear. I'm going to type in 1,000. I only like to change one variable time. So I'm not sure that an x max of 10 is big enough to contain my solution. Perhaps the solution to the equation is bigger than 10. I don't know yet. So right now I'm just going to leave it to 10 to see how the graph looks. So I'm going to press the graph key. So my x min is negative 10. My x max is 10 over here. My y min was negative 10, but it almost looks like zero relative to how big I made my y max. My y max up here is 1,000. So it looks like I got lucky. It looks like this solution is between x equals negative 10 and 10. To find the solution, I need to use the calculator's intersect feature. It's located in the calc menu right here. But since the calc menu is the second function of the trace key, you need to press second, then trace, Notice that command number 5 is the intersect feature. Either go down and press enter or be lazy like me and just press the number 5. It's going to ask you three questions. It asks, is this the first curve, y equals 522? You say yes by pressing enter. Is this the second curve? And it shows my equation here, yes. You say yes by pressing enter. The calculator does not take voice commands. 
The guess actually is unimportant right now because there's only one intersection. But suppose I had a problem that had multiple intersections. Suppose there was one on the left and one on the right, say, and I wanted the one on the right. If that were the case, it would be important before you press enter on the guess to trace to the right and get close to that intersection. It turns out if there's only one intersection point that you don't need to do this. You can just press enter on the guess. The problem with doing this is sometimes because the cursor is right at the intersection point now, or at least close to it, students think that's the answer. But it simply isn't. It's just you guessing. You need to press enter to enter your guess. Let the calculator think about it for a second. It'll even say the word intersection on there. Now remember, we're solving for x. So the x value that solves this equation to two decimal places, remember, would be 5.63. The digit just to the right of the 3 is a 2, which is smaller than 5. So convention has it that we do not round the 3 up. So even though I'm giving three digits in my answer, only the 6 and the 3 count as decimal points. So my answer would be 5.63, and you would be typing it in to this cell right here.